Hi, and welcome back. Uh, in this one, we're gonna talk about making characters and how to go about that, how to assign characters. I'm joining my game here. You can see that a character has joined my game. Um, that is another one of my accounts. Um, I could promote this particular person to GM or I could kick, kick from the game. Uh, if you promote them to GM, they, they do get the ability, I believe, to kick other people from the game, so just be aware who you give that to. And they can also see everything. What they can't do is delete the game. Only the creator of the game is able to delete the game, uh, but they could delete everything in the game, uh, but they couldn't delete the actual game itself. So we're going to go ahead and launch that game, uh, and we need to make a character for myself. Now, me as a player, uh, me as a GM, need to give him a character sheet. Need to give Matthew a character sheet. So I'm going to go to the far right side where they have the add in the upper right hand side and click add and then character. Um, that will create a random character named character, uh, Louis Bra Bra Brio uh, Slack. Yeah. I, you can see I'm great with names, uh, and we're just going to name this player one. The reason I'm naming it player one is because I don't know who my player is going to want to name their character as. And so I'm going to say, hey, uh, Matthew, you have player one as your character sheet. Do what you will with it. Uh, he's going to say, hey, I have a token for you. And he's going to send me the token over Discord or in an email, uh, in which case I can take that token and I can drag and drop it right there. Uh, it'll allow it to upload. Now, here's the interesting thing about the token. Just because I put it there doesn't mean, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. First, now that I put his token there, you could wait to do this at any time, by the way. You don't have to do it right away, and I'll show you how to get back to this screen. Uh, but we need to assign the character, and so it needs. To, I always select in all players' journals. This allows all the players to view the, Bible, the bio and see what the character looks like. Uh, but that's all. They can't see stats. They can't see secrets. They can't see anything but the bio and what the character looks like. I will show that in a second. And editing can be controlled by. I need to assign it to the player. Now, keep in mind, you do not need to assign it to yourself, the GM. The GM can see every single character and edit and control every single character. Now, down here, you might add something to the bio. bio. Player one has entered the game. Uh, now, if I put something here in the GM notes, uh, kill this one with rocks, uh, they won't see that once you have everything you want to do on this screen. So in Player's Journal, you click Save Changes. Now, I want to point out something kind of cool about Roll20. Uh, if you look all the way over to the right-hand side here, you'll see that Player1 has a blue dot next to them. That blue dot is indicative of the fact that everyone can see this sheet but only one person can edit it. If I change this to all players can edit it, the blue dot remains because the blue is indicated of everyone. But if I change this to only Matt can see it and only Matt can edit it, see how the blue dot has changed to a different color blue? Each player ends up with their own color and you can see who has access and the ability to see a sheet simply based upon the color. Kind of neat, uh, but uh, not super useful, but one of those things that I like to point out. You also notice that I'm getting back into the character tab or to edit it by coming up here to the middle and say edit. Now, a couple buttons on this. One, this is the bio and info tab. Player one has entered the game. The picture that I put there. This is the tab that when you say all players can see the sheet right here in all players journals and players journals, all players, this is where this is all they can see. They can't see the character sheet. They can't see the abilities and attributes. They can only see the bio. And the GM notes is the only visible to the GM. But this is not all that you need to do. You still need to create a character. Now, you could go into here and leave it just as this, and that is 100% fine. Your players can click these buttons. You don't need to set it up. But I want to tell you what these buttons do. Use the character mancer. This will go through a program that Roll20 has built that actually works really well, that helps you build the character from ground one. Now you're only gonna build the first level and after that you can continue to use the Character Mancer to build a bunch of other levels. Now the Character Mancer can build it one level at a time or after you've established the first level, you can then build it 15 levels at a time if you want it. The second button is create an NPC. That one allows you to just 
make an NPC. It brings all the information up that you need for an NPC. I will show you both of those in a second. Edit Sheet directly is basically a manual in editing. Say you have a homebrew character class that's not in here and you want to just put it in or you already have what your character sheet looks like and you don't want to use the character mancer, then you want to edit the sheet directly. So first, uh, I'm going to show you the character mancer. So you click use the character mancer, it brings you into here. You can click between any of these at any time and alter them as you go along, or you can start your way through by clicking start, clicking next. First thing they want you to do is choose a race and da 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 da. da. Uh, this is, I don't have to explain to you how to make a character. You can skip, by the way, almost any field you can skip. You can skip alignment, you can skip your sub race. What will happen is when you reach, so we're gonna say uh, we're skipping the sub race. Uh, what happens is we, when you reach the review, you'll notice, I pointed at my screen, but uh, you'll notice that under race, it says you have known, you haven't chosen your alignment, and there's a giant X, you haven't selected a sub race. That is something you have to choose to build this. And the class, you haven't chosen the class, and you haven't put in ability scores, and you've not selected a background, and you haven't selected any equipment. Those Xs are things that you need to select. And so I can go to the equipment tab, and it won't really let me select an equipment because I haven't selected any background. So I could go and say, I'm going to be an acolyte and I'm going to be proficient in things. Now I can go to the equipment tab and it still won't let me select one. Probably because I didn't save this. Um, uh, probably because I didn't click next. Um, I don't have to choose those bonds, but because I don't have any abilities, abilities in, uh, that's a problem. And so, because I don't have a class, you know, so let's go ahead and build a class. Um, I am jumping all over here and this could be very confusing. Just know that you can do this in any order that you wanna do it. Um, and as you go through it, if you just start at the start and click next and work through one thing at a time, then you'll end up with a character that builds itself. So real quick, I'm gonna build this so you can see what that looks like. Um, uh, rock gnome, uh, sorry, uh, what did I do? Uh, rock gnome, we'll click next to go to the next part. Um, I already selected a druid. Notice the SRD, this is the free stuff. If you have the player's handbook, you're gonna be missing stuff that are in there because there's stuff in there that's not in the SRD. Abilities, uh, the only option here is custom. If you are a paid member, there's a dice roller in here. There's also the ability to do um, uh, 46 drop the lowest. There's the ability to do uh, point buy and other things, but custom is the only way you can go. So this guy, is uh, rolled really poorly on all of his stats, so he has all eights. Um, I've already selected the stuff there. See how the stuff I selected from before still applies? Uh, then we get to the equipment. The reason it wouldn't allow me the equipment before is because I hadn't selected a class. So I'm just gonna say starting wealth. Uh, if you tell it to roll, it'll roll. Um, notice here up in the chat, the blue, it, it's lit up blue even though my mouse isn't over there. That's telling you that there's something going on over there. You also heard a little bit of a beep. See, I'll do it again. Every time you hear that noise, it means somebody has rolled something. Wow, that's a really damn good roll. If you don't like that noise, you can go over here and turn off enable background chat beep. Um, that means that now if I click, no noise. I always have that off. Anyway, I have my gold, click next. I have to choose my spells. And, oops, if you move around too fast, it doesn't kiss, keep up. Uh, feats, I don't have any because I'm that. You don't have to fill any of this in, but this would be where you put your player name. Uh, we're gonna go next and review. See, there are no X's next to anything. There are things I haven't chosen, but that's fine. It can still make the character now. Then it'll go through, it'll make your character, and voila, I have a sheet uh, with a character with all the things necessary. Now, interesting thing. If you take up here, you look at the top of the sheet. Let's go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger so we don't have to scroll. Uh, you have your druid background. If you click this gear box, you can change any of that. You don't need to change that to level up. If you want to continue to do the character mancer, you go to the settings where my mouse is. Upper right hand corner of the sheet is where the settings box is. And you can come down to the middle right hand side and that's where you're gonna get your character mancer. Launch level one character mancer is starting over 100%. Launch level plus character mancer is adding levels to your 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 thing this is also where you would change your how you do your armor class if you're say a barbarian and you don't want it to automatically you might need to do a custom one where it's uh, dex 
plus constitution to come up with your armor class. Um, you also might say, say you're a ranger and you have advantage on all, um, all initiative rolls. You might need to change that to advantage. Um, you could also add levels and other things. It has the artificer here. I guess that's part of the SRD now. Uh, you could change your hit dice for any reason that you need. You have a lot of things here. Halfling luck, arcane fighter, arcane rogue. Um, we want our whisper toggle on, uh, but we need don't care about the advantage thing. So going off of this, but core brings us back here. If there's a yellow line, that means it's in edit mode. Uh, if you click the gear box, the yellow line goes away, and you now can't edit it. Um, it starts off in edit mode because there's nothing in there. This is where you might put things that are class related. Say you're doing a homebrew one, um, this would be where you do it. You just click the plus, you add whether or not it's a racial class, feat, background, or other, uh, and you can put where you get it, dwarf, fighter, fourth level, something like that, and then you put the text in right here. Uh, so we will say stuff. This is a class feat uh, that I get at level 20 and cool. Actually, I like that way of spelling cool. Cool. Nope, not with the second C. That's not cool. Cool stuff. Um, and then when you're done at eight, you kick the gearbox. There it is. If you click the name, it hides it, so you don't need to see all of the text. If you click the chat box, it sends it to the chat. Um, if you are currently whispered, you can click the chat box, and it'll whisper it. The yellow indicates that it was whispered. Uh, bio. This is your private and personal bio. This would be where you put stuff. For me, I always tell my players to put their base stats here. So that way I can see how they got their ability scores and say they get that belt of ogre giant strength and they take it off. We can go back to what they were without having them be like, wait a minute. So the belt set me at 23, but I think I put a 16 in there and then my ASI. No, it's all here. Um, you can also have all sorts of different interesting things here. And then spells. This is where the spell list is. Say uh, you gave me a wand of fireball. I will go back to my compendium in the upper right-hand corner. See the compendium uh, where my mouse is, upper right-hand corner. And then I'm going to start typing fire. Look at that. I have everything with fireball. I can click the spell. If I I don't know what this does. Oh, it opens up the uh, it opens up the spell so I can look at it. Or I can hover over the name and then drag it over to the sheet. And here it says accepting drop from compendium. Now you can drop it right in there or you can drop it anywhere. And it will add it. See, there we go. I have fireball. If I click this, it asks what level I want to spell it. Always ninth level. Always serious fireballs. And then it'll roll. But hey, look at that. It's already automatic, automatically making my DC uh, based upon all of that. And it whispered it because I'm still on whispers. Uh, up here you have your inspiration. If you click that, somebody gave inspiration your proficiency bonus, all of your skills and things. Passive perception is down here, tools that you have, uh, every piece of armor and language and weapon that I have. Uh, if you don't like having this all like on individual lines, you can of course sit here and um, put it all on the same line, which is what I spend my first game doing while I'm waiting for other people to do things. As I listen to them, I adjust the uh, thing so it has a lot less. But that is up to you. This is where you might put items. So say I got a backpack. Uh, backpack is spelled with a P. Uh, yep, there it is. I can drag it over here. And look at that. It added it to the item. It has the proper weight. Um, I also probably have a shield uh, because all druids carry shields, right? And notice the first one is shield the spell. I don't want to add that. If I do drag it over, uh, let's go ahead and add my shield. There we go. Added the shield. But I added the spell shield accidentally. Look at that. Here it added it for me. Um, if you want to delete anything, you always have to click on the lock button to unlock, and then you can click the trash can icon to delete it. And that's pretty much the, the, uh, the player sheet. Um, this one has gone a lot longer than I wanted it to, uh, up to 13 minutes at the moment. We're going to go just a little bit longer because there's one more thing that you have to do to set it up. You have this cool player, player one, but when you pull it out, there's no stats or anything you want them to have stats associated with it so what you have to do is open the sheet which you can do by double clicking the name or holding shift and double clicking the token go to edit and click use selected token but before you do that let's click the token and it brings up these three colored boxes the gear box and this whatever this is uh, this has lots of different symbols in it i use these for i use yellow for concentrating on a spell uh, I use this for flying. Um, if you hover over something and 
hit a number, it will put the number there for you. So say a character is at 100 feet, you might want to do this. There you go, 100 feet. Um, clicking on it again gets rid of it. Uh, but in the gear box, you can select, see how it says represents character one? You can then come down here, uh, hit H to find HP, uh, which some people like HP to be in the red box. I always do it in the green box uh, because I want to. Uh, the blue one I always put as AC. If you're doing an NPC, you need to type N as NPC. Uh, or you can set the AC in the red and temporary HP in the blue. Or you can put anything you want there in the blue. You don't have to have anything in the blue. I don't know what hair really does there, so I set it to none. Save changes. Now I have these things filled, so I can just click and see where their health is at. But it doesn't stick unless you say use selected token. If I make any changes now to this token, such as going into advanced and changing uh, what people can see and whether or not uh, they have dark vision, which at the moment you don't get because apparently uh, this isn't a thing you can do. In the uh, premium version, you can adjust dark vision and stuff like that. But since the uh, current version, you can't use dynamic lighting, they don't give you dark vision stuff because it doesn't matter. But when you have dynamic lighting, you have the ability to set how far they can see with it. Uh, but say I wanted to change something. Say I wanted to change this to player two and I click save changes. Uh, great, it's gonna show up as player two, but when I pull out another token, it's going to still be player one. Uh, see, because I, it didn't save. If I wanna make that save, then I have to remove the token and then say use selected token. Now, if I pull this out, and I look over here, look at that. It says player two. Uh, let's turn on show nameplate. See how I said show nameplate? But if I pull out another one, it's not gonna show the nameplate because I have to remove the token and then say use selected token. Now, one of the negative things is to say uh, he has 10 hit points, or actually that's his AC. Say he has 10, seven hit points and he takes five. So I subtract minus five. Look at all the tokens lost hit points. That's because all the tokens are tied together. In another video, I will teach you how to untie those. Uh, it's not really important for player characters. Uh, you actually want it for player characters because when they get hurt on one map, the uh, damage tends to apply usually. Sometimes it doesn't work, but usually it applies over to the other map. Um, but that being said, if you have a goblin horde, you don't want one goblin to take the damage for all the goblins. So. Uh, I will show you how to break that apart. I'm going to just select all these, delete this, save these changes so it applies. Uh, and there we go. We created a character sheet. Um, that's pretty much it for the character sheet. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to hit me up on Discord or on Reddit, um, and I'd be happy to help. Uh, thank you, and stay safe.